One step into the city of Beverly Hills, where the essence of luxury is not just lived, but breathed, is often said to cast a spell of opulence that blankets the land. Indeed, this sanctuary of Southern California wealth, with its air perfumed by affluence, invites you into a world where every corner tells a story of grandeur. Here, amid the lush boulevards, stand guardians of history, majestic stone edifices that whisper tales of a bygone era's extravagance. However, one monument, in particular, beckons with a presence that transcends its physical bounds, serving as a gateway to the saga of an old money family whose vision carved the destiny of Beverly Hills from the dreams of giants. This is your entrance into the legacy of the Doheny family, an emblem of early American prosperity that shaped this enclave into a citadel of luxury. Coming from humble origins to a level of wealth matched only by the name Rockefeller, their foresight transformed the Californian landscape, melding their dreams with the earth to craft an oasis of elegance. In today's episode, we invite you on a voyage through their opulent rags to riches tale, exploring how dreams etched in stone can define the heart of a city as we describe. The old money family that built Beverly Hills, the Dahini dynasty. The 1920s roared for the Doheny family, with Edward L. Doheny's pockets bulging from striking black gold in Los Angeles back in 1892. By this jazz-infused decade, he wasn't just rolling in dough, he was out rolling the likes of John D. Rockefeller. Picture it, Doheny, a titan of the oil scene, sitting atop a mountain of cash with a net worth breezing past $100 million by 1925, and that's a cool 1.67 billion today, in case you're wondering. And Doheny wasn't just a lucky prospector. Alongside his sidekick, Charles A. Canfield, he hit the oil jackpot in Mexico, turning them into the world's oil kings. By 1902, Doheny's Huasteca Petroleum Company was sprawling over 448,000 acres in Mexico, pumping out 85% of the country's oil making him the biggest independent oil producer on the planet. But let's not sugarcoat it. While Doheny's wallet got fatter, the benefits for Mexico's people and government were, well, less than a trickle. Then there's the piece de resistance of Doheny's empire, the Greystone Mansion. Constructed in 1928 for a whopping $3.1 million, equal to around $53 million in today's money, this Tudor revival masterpiece was a gift to his son, Edward Ned Doheny Jr. Designed by the star architect Gordon B. Kaufman, this 55-room, 46,000-square-foot behemoth sat on 16 lush acres, claiming the title of California's priciest home at the time. Thus, if walls could talk, Greystone's environs would probably just chuckle and say, Expensive? Darling, I'm priceless. But Greystone was just the jewel in the crown of the Doheny real estate empire. The family also owned a French Gothic chateau in the exclusive Chester Place, transforming Doheny Sr. into the unofficial king of this gated community. If you're picturing Monopoly, you're not far off, except in this game, Doheny was playing with real houses and real money. So while the 20s were roaring for many, they were practically singing for the Dohenys, with Edward L. leading the chorus from his oil-drenched throne, overshadowing even the mightiest of moguls. But the Doheny family wasn't just about opulent mansions and oil gushers. They had a knack for turning everything they touched into a display of grandeur, including the great outdoors and the automobile industry. They transformed Chester Place into a sprawling private park and generously gifted a chunk of their coastal paradise in Dana Point to the state of California, creating what's now known as Doheny State Beach. And their philanthropy didn't stop at the beach. They were also instrumental in the growth of academia in Los Angeles, doling out parcels of land for campuses like Mount St. Mary's College and erecting buildings at Loyola Marymount University. Clearly, when the Dohenies went into philanthropy mode, they went big. But, oh, the cars. The Dohenies took luxury to the streets with a fleet of custom-built automobiles that turned heads and set the standard for high-class travel. Edward and Ned Doheny weren't just car owners. 
They were connoisseurs of bespoke automotive artistry, commissioning creations from the Earl Automobile Works that were as much about status as they were about getting from point A to point B. These were showstoppers, each a masterpiece of design and luxury that showcased the Doheny's place atop the social and industrial ladder. Plus, art and culture weren't left behind in the Doheny dash for distinction. The family's residences, particularly the storied Greystone Mansion, doubled as sanctuaries for a lavish collection of art and rare books. Their homes were more than mere living spaces. They were temples of taste, brimming with fine art and exquisite furnishings that could rival any museum. And in true Doheny style, their art wasn't just for private enjoyment. It was shared with the world in exhibitions, adding a dash of their opulent lifestyle to the cultural tapestry of Los Angeles and beyond. In every sense, the Doheny's didn't just live in the era, they were architects of it, crafting a legacy that was as much about the splendor they surrounded themselves with as it was about the unforgettable mark they left on Californian society and industry. However, this old money saga isn't one that starts with little Edward holding a silver spoon, enjoying his opulent wealth from a young age. In fact, the Doheny journey is one out of the classic rags to riches style in American history, which is what we'll investigate in the next chapter. At the close of the 19th century, the ascent of Edward L. Doheny encapsulates the quintessence of the American dream, set against the backdrop of an Irish immigrant family's endeavor for a better life. Born into the Doheny family in 1856 in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, Edward's narrative was not isolated, but part of a larger wave of Irish emigration. Fleeing famine, political upheaval, and economic despair, Edward's parents represented a microcosm of the Irish diaspora, driven by the hope of forging a prosperous existence in the United States. Thus, Edward's early years were deeply influenced by the resilience and aspirations of his forebears. Despite the family's humble beginnings, Edward exhibited a tenacious spirit and ambition from an early age, and by 16, he ventured out, working as a mule driver for the US government's geological survey teams, marking his first foray into the realm of prospecting. However, this endeavor quickly revealed its limitations in terms of financial gain, propelling Edward towards the pursuit of precious metals in the West's rugged terrains. His quest for fortune led him across the American frontier, from the Black Hills of South Dakota to various other locales known for their mineral wealth. Yet, these early attempts at mining were met with limited success. The 1880 census records, identifying him as a painter in Prescott, Arizona, underscore a period of financial instability and a deviation from his initial aspirations. But these years, characterized by a diverse range of jobs and challenges, unknowingly laid the groundwork for Doheny's eventual triumph in the oil industry. Then, his venture into Los Angeles would mark the inception of a remarkable chapter in the development of the American oil industry. His arrival in the city in 1890, with initial aspirations within the legal field, quickly took a dramatic turn, and destiny had a unique path charted for him. In 1892, Doheny's attention was captured by a wagon laden with oil-soaked soil while ambling through Los Angeles. This peculiar sight propelled him to engage with the driver, who introduced him to Brea, a term for tar, igniting Doheny's curiosity and setting the stage for his future endeavors. With the foundation of his oil empire commencing, Doheny, alongside his mining partner Charles A. Canfield, embarked on an ambitious journey by drilling the first successful oil well in Los Angeles. Nestled near what is today known as Dodger Stadium in Echo Park, this venture not only struck oil, but also ignited the Los Angeles oil boom, redefining the industry's landscape. The well's success underscored Doheny's transformation into a vanguard of the California oil realm, stemming from his acute observation and innovative approach. He capitalized on the visible oil seeps in the area, deducing the existence of bountiful underground oil reserves. Soon, the repercussions of Doheny's discovery reverberated beyond his immediate circle, engendering a profound transformation across Los Angeles and its adjacent regions. 
the oil well beckoned a wave of prospectors and investors, catalyzing the oil industry's expansion and bolstering Los Angeles's evolution into a pivotal urban center. But soon, Doheny and his team wouldn't simply limit their influence to Southern California, or even solely to the United States. Doheny was going global, as we'll see in the next chapter. Edward L. Doheny's ventures stretched well beyond the confines of California and significantly marked the early 20th century's industrial landscape. His foresight led him to Tampico, Mexico in 1901, where he established the nation's inaugural oil well. And this venture wasn't merely an act of pioneering spirit, but a strategic maneuver that positioned Doheny at the forefront of the oil industry amidst the Mexican Revolution. Under his guidance, the Mexican Petroleum Company emerged as Mexico's leading oil producer. Notably, in 1916, his Cerro Azul No. 4 well distinguished itself as the preeminent oil producing well globally, boasting a production rate of 260,000 barrels a day. And Doheny's influence in the oil sector extended to South America where his ventures in Venezuela and Colombia saw the Pan American Petroleum and Transport Company ascend to one of the globe's foremost oil entities in the 1920s. His knack for strategic investments, particularly in essential infrastructure like pipelines and storage facilities, played a pivotal role in the efficient distribution of crude oil from these territories. However, Edward Doheny's reign was not without its controversies. For example, his involvement in the Teapot Dome scandal stands as one of the early 20th century's most notable episodes of corporate and political misconduct. In 1922, a controversial decision was made by Albert B. Fall, the U.S. Secretary of the Interior, to lease significant oil reserves at Elk Hills, California, to Doheny's Pan American Petroleum and Transport Company, and the Teapot Dome field in Wyoming to the Sinclair Consolidated Oil Corporation. These reserves were crucial assets of the U.S. Navy and the leases were arranged without the transparency of competitive bidding, a decision that would soon ignite a scandal of national proportions. The core of the controversy centered around a $100,000 payment made by Doheny to Secretary Fall in 1921, purportedly as a gift but widely regarded as a bribe to secure the lease on the Elk Hills Naval Petroleum Reserve. This act of bribery, although Doheny was ultimately acquitted in 1930, significantly marred his reputation. Then, the scandal expanded as it was revealed that Fall had accepted similar bribes for the leasing of the Teapot Dome oil field, leading to his conviction. In the aftermath, Doheny divested a majority of his holdings in Pan American Petroleum and Transport to Standard Oil of Indiana in April 1925 while consolidating his California assets into the newly formed Pan American Western Petroleum Company. This strategic maneuver allowed Doheny to refocus on the core aspects of oil exploration and production, distancing himself from the scandal. But the legal entanglements and public scrutiny intensified when Doheny and Fall faced the prospect of a second trial for bribery in 1929. Subsequently, in a tragic turn of events, Doheny's son Ned and his assistant, Hugh Plunkett, both implicated in the scandal, died in a murder, plus Ned taking his own life, under circumstances that remain speculative and contentious. Raymond Chandler, who briefly intersected with the oil industry during this turbulent period, later wove elements of these events into his literary work, reflecting on the lasting impact of the scandal. In the years following, Edward Doheny retreated from the public eye, overwhelmed by legal battles and personal loss. Indeed, the shareholder lawsuits that ensued in the wake of the Teapot Dome scandal, coupled with the death of his son, led to his withdrawal into a life marked by solitude and declining health. But Doheny's legacy, while significant in the development of the American oil industry, remains intricately tied to one of the most infamous scandals in US history serving as a cautionary tale of the risks inherent in the unchecked pursuit of power and wealth. On the flip side, his descendants would pave a much more upbeat path for the west side of Los Angeles in the coming years.
In the latter part of the 19th century, Edward L. Doheny took a significant step into family life with his marriage to Carrie Luella Wilkins in 1883. Specifically, their union took root during Doheny's aforementioned initial forays into prospecting and mining in the challenging landscapes of the New Mexico Territory. The couple settled in Kingston, a modest and rugged silver mining town where Doheny sought to carve out a fortune in mining before shifting his focus to the burgeoning oil industry. The birth of their daughter, Eileen, in December 1885, marked the onset of Doheny's familial responsibilities. Nonetheless, these initial years were characterized by economic challenges as Doheny endeavored to provide for his family, at times engaging in various occupations, including painting. Following the unfortunate demise of his first wife, Doheny entered a second marriage in 1900 with Carrie Estelle Betzold, a telephone operator he encountered in Los Angeles. By this time, Doheny had already laid the foundations of his wealth in the oil sector. Estelle, born in Philadelphia in 1875 and having moved to Los Angeles at 15 with her German immigrant parents, underwent a remarkable transformation from a telephone operator to a prominent philanthropist and an avid book collector through her marriage to Doheny. This transition underscored the profound influence of Doheny's achievements on his family's fortunes. In stark contrast to the hardships endured with his first wife, his life with Estelle was characterized by affluence and societal influence. Estelle leveraged her position for philanthropy, significantly impacting the community, notably through her support for the Catholic Church and her role in founding the Doheny Eye Institute after suffering partial blindness, reflecting the Doheny family's extensive social influence. But of course, the narrative of the Doheny legacy extends to Edward L. Doheny's descendants, notably through Lucy Doheny Batson, who later became Lucy Doheny Batson Niven and her lineage, which includes Larry Niven. Larry Niven, a luminary in science fiction literature and a recipient of the Hugo Award five times, exemplifies the broad spectrum of talents and contributions the Doheny family has made beyond industrial and philanthropic endeavors. Therefore, while Lucy's direct connection to her father's legacy may not have been as publicly prominent as that of her brother Ned, her descendants have made significant cultural contributions, particularly in literature and entertainment, underscoring the Doheny family's diverse legacy. And Ned Doheny and Lucy Smith's offspring perpetuated the family's legacy across diverse spheres, notably through their philanthropic and cultural engagements. The Estelle Doheny Eye Foundation, a homage to Edward L. Doheny's second spouse, embodies the family's dedication to advancing medical research, with its endowment surpassing the $100 million mark. And Patrick A. Doheny, a descendant of Ned, has played a pivotal role in enriching Los Angeles's cultural scene, notably through his support for the LA County Museum of Art. Furthermore, despite their profound impact, the Doheny family has favored discretion over public acclaim. Yet, their sustained support for esteemed institutions, including the Huntington Library, eloquently speaks to their unwavering commitment to fostering cultural and scientific advancement. However, for most Angelinos and Beverly Hills residents, the most iconic piece of the Doheny legacy lives on in a stone edifice that we all know and cherish, which we'll discuss next. In the heart of Beverly Hills, California, Greyston Mansion emerges as a remarkable showcase of early 20th century opulence and architectural brilliance. This Tudor revival marvel, completed in 1928, was the brainchild of noted architect Gordon B. Kaufman. It was conceived as a grand gift from Edward L. Doheny to his son Ned and his family, embodying the zenith of luxury and ambition of its era. Constructed with an investment exceeding $3 million, a figure unheard of at the time, the mansion set a new standard for residential grandeur in California. And since the city of Beverly Hills acquired it in 1965, turning it into a public park six years later, Greystone Mansion has woven itself into the fabric of the community's cultural and social life. It has graced the silver screen and television, 
serving as a picturesque setting for numerous productions and thereby cementing its place in Hollywood lore. Furthermore, the mansion's elegance and historical significance make it a prime venue for weddings, sophisticated gatherings and cultural events such as the annual Music in the Mansion series, which celebrates classical music, enhancing the cultural offerings available to the community. Thus, Greystone Mansion today is more than a landmark. It is a vibrant testament to the community's dedication to preserving its rich cultural heritage. And beyond their immediate estate, the Doheny family has significantly shaped the broader Beverly Hills and Los Angeles community. Edward L. Doheny's charitable activities, especially through the Carrie Estelle Doheny Foundation established by his widow, have been instrumental in enhancing the welfare, health and education within Los Angeles. This foundation, together with the family's other philanthropic efforts, has contributed profoundly to the cultural and social fabric of the city. Furthermore, the Doheny name has become a permanent fixture in the landscape and history of Beverly Hills and its surroundings. Doheny Drive, serving as a daily testament to the family's lasting presence and contributions to urban development, runs through the heart of the city. Additionally, the Doheny family's ventures into real estate, notably the creation of the prestigious Trousdale Estates on what was once part of the Doheny Ranch, have profoundly influenced the architectural and community development of the area. And therefore, the Doheny family's story has all of the trappings of a classic American old money tale, rags to riches, triumph, tragedy, scandal, and philanthropic endeavors. And now, we'd like to see you in the comments. Are you a native of Los Angeles, or have you visited the Greystone Estate during a visit to the City of Angels? We love hearing from you. And thanks again for joining us for another episode of Old Money Luxury. Cheers, until next time.